That's nice. Oh, and I got free mill gold. You want to find gold? I'm going to teach you the geological skills you need so that when you go out in the field, you have a better chance of finding gold every time. You see those mountains behind me? Those are young tertiary volcanics, andesites. Now, as a certified geologist, I can tell you right now that those hills over there have gold in them. How do I know? Because I researched the geological maps and I've actually had boots on the ground to determine where the contact zones are for the gold deposits. You see this? This is basaltic rock. There's swarms of them out here. And why is that important? Because a lot of the silicified veins that are out here follow the same pattern. So you're not gonna have parallel veins out here. You're gonna have swarms or what's called stockworks. Why is that important? Because I have a lot of silicified veins out here that are doing the same thing. And that's important because those are the places that are gonna have the gold. Now, another key to finding gold out here is there's a plutonic intrusion here of quartz monzonite. When you see quartz monzonite intruding andesites, you know you're in a good area for finding gold deposits. Get down to the bedrock. Washes are the best place to find that. Here you can see where I've got a lot of basalts, a lot of andesites, and I can see the intrusion of that quartz monzonite. This is the first place I would sample is down in the washes down below the hills. If there's going to be any gold, a lot of it's going to be eroded out and down here, unless the vein is below surface. Another good indicator is pegmatitic quartz and chalcedony. Those two indicators out here in these volcanic districts is also a good sign. Here's another piece right here. It's strewn all about. You see that? It's all solidified. Now, before you put boots on the ground, I highly recommend you do the research first. And what that means is checking your MRDS. Those reports are gonna tell you if anything had been found. Keep in mind, that's not a guarantee because I found many gold deposits where they said it shouldn't be. But to give yourself a head start on finding that gold, I would definitely do the research at home first. You'll save yourself a lot of time unless you're a seasoned pro. And make sure you comb over the USGS reports. They're gonna have vital information in there that's gonna tell you the type of gold they were finding and how much of it. More good examples right there. See the manganese oxide, the black? That's a good sign too. Now another thing you're gonna to wanna to become familiarized with and learn how to read is geological maps. The reason why is they're gonna show you all the information you need to get started on finding these gold deposits, especially if it's in a known gold producing district. I've already checked a lot of this information out already. And according to my research, these hills should have free mill gold in them. And we're gonna find it today and I'm gonna show you how. Now the problem with a lot of these mining districts that are open on BLM have been sealed up by BLM. And the one we're standing on now has obviously been bulldozed shut. There's a lot of reasons for that. BLM will tell you it's because of safety, but I did a little background search on this one and bare gold mining had a lot to do with these being sealed. So that tells me that these mines have gold in them. Now, before I came out here and got all excited, I checked land status and that's what you should do too. I usually use a site called mylandmatters.org. It's not the best, but it's a lot easier than navigating LR2000 sites on BLM's website. As far as I can tell, Barrick released their claim on this and now it's open. So we're gonna go prospect this area and I'm gonna teach you what I know about finding these types of gold deposits. Now, because we're in Nevada, I can almost guarantee you that whatever gold we find in here is gonna be some type of an electrum, which means it has 20, 30% silver alloyed in with it. So it's not gonna be that buttery gold that you're used to seeing in California or Australia. Already, I can see exposures of andesite. And because it's green, that tells me it's chloritic andesite. That's one of the best andesites that I've ever found gold in because the chlorite helps dissolve the gold. And then when it boils off during hydrothermal deposition or alteration, then it redeposits again. So look for those green andesites, especially if you have any kind of plutonic intrusions like quartz monzonite. On the outer fracture rings are gonna be the best areas to find heavy mineralization whether that's in stockworks or your fault gouge or your veinlets. The outer rings, that's where it's gonna be the richest. Now, because you have a lot of your vein structures crisscrossing out here, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky to find the ones that have been hidden. If they were parallel veins, it would be a no brainer. So we're gonna to have to do our homework. Now in the USGS reports, most of the productive veins ran in a Northeast strike and they had about an 80 to 90 degree dip. As far as grade goes, the reports are sketchy, but the reports did agree on one thing. They said that the vein that they were working back in the early 1900s was two inches wide and was considered pitcher rock or what they used to call jewelry rock. And that tells me that there was a lot of free mill gold in it. And that's what drew me to this site originally. Now, another aspect that I found out here was there was a lot of hematite staining, a lot of barite crystals, and a lot of mimetite. Mimetite 
is a lead arsenic chloride and it closely resembles wolfenite. In fact, if you get it in your pan, it's gonna be identical to wolfenite. And at first you're gonna think it's gold until closer inspection, but it is beautiful. Now they were finding also calcite, which isn't a no brainer, along with copper staining out here as well. If you find all those in one particular vein structure, that's the best place to sample. And this is a good example of the vein structure right here. You can see out of this hanging wall here of andesites. I've got the silicified zone here. I've got this altered andesite here. And then over here, I've got a lot of, of the blacks, which are manganese oxide. I got a lot of barite crystal. I got a lot of hematite. And I bet you if I look into these bugs, I'm gonna see copper staining and I'm gonna find mimetite crystals. So I'm gonna focus on this area right here. Now, before I take any samples like chip samples or channel samples, I'm gonna run a VLF over it just to see if I've got any pocket gold in there. Because with these types of deposits, it's very common to have small, very rich pockets inside the vein structures. Now you've seen me a lot with a Gold Monster 1000, but in this particular scenario, I would recommend the Gold Bug 2 over the Gold Monster 1000. And I'm gonna tell you why. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice when you look up the operational specs for the Gold Bug 2 is that it has a really high operational frequency range of 71 kilohertz, which is much, much higher than the Gold Monster 1000. And it's that high operational range you need when you're trying to find load gold. The higher the frequency, the better chances you'll have of detecting out load gold because load gold, generally speaking, is very, very small. And in fact, I would also recommend getting a Falcon MD20, which operates in the range of 400 kilohertz. And that's perfect for finding load gold, but you have to know how to use it. And there's a secret behind it, and I've done many videos on it, and I'll make another video here in the future. Now, yes, I know I should have brought it with me, but I didn't. So we're gonna have to rely on the gold bug too to sniff out any gold deposits. There's a nice solicified zone. You see the pockets right there? I got a pocket there and I got some pockets in here. This is the material I'm mostly interested in and this is what I'm gonna be checking. Now, another thing I gotta tell you or warn you about is when you start hunting these districts, chances are you're gonna go through a lot of trash and bullets, casings, because people like to come out here and shoot at these areas, especially if there's a road that goes to it. So keep that in mind if you're gonna be running a VLF. All right, let's see what we can find. You wanna get that coil right up against the rock surface, but be aware it's gonna sound off when it bumps. Now I've got my detector tuned a little hot, which means that when I go down, it's gonna sound off just a little. That way I have a better chance of finding that ultra fine gold. But keep in mind, it's gonna get chirpy. That's nice. Right there. Hear how crisp that is? And it's in that pocket. So now we gotta remove it. Now for any of you out there that have ever done hard rock mining, you know exactly what I'm up against. But for you new folks out there, extraction is the hardest part. Finding it is the easy one. So I'm gonna have to either chip this out by hand, use electric jackhammer, an air jackhammer, or if you have an FEL license, you can blast it out. Because we're in such a remote area, I'm gonna go ahead and bring a small little hammer drill and get it out that way. Because doing it by hand with my pick hammer is gonna take all day. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but here's some barite crystals that came out of this particular zone. As you can see, they have beautiful, well-defined cleavage and they're semi-translucent and they're about a four fun mos so real pretty to look at now before we get started another quick geological tip for you is if you're going to be prospecting in the greater southwest area and you happen to come across some usgs reports that tell you that the gold deposits were associated with wolfenite or mimetite go after them especially if it's found in a contact zone between quartz monzonite which is a plutonic rock and andesite i can assure you they're going to be rich so keep that in mind when you're thumbing through all those reports. 
course, wolfenite is a, a lead oxide, and usually you'll find it on the outer oxidation zones of lead deposits, but it's very common to find it with gold deposits. And I've seen that a lot out here in these hydrothermal deposition zones. So keep that in mind. Now, if you're gonna be doing any type of hard rock mining, small scale and sampling, I highly recommend that you get yourself a battery powered hammer drill. It's gonna save you so much time out in the field or if you're working a small deposit, they come in all different shapes and sizes. And of course, get extra batteries too. It's nothing worse when you're on the gold and you run out of juice. Another thing I would recommend is these little vac packs right here. You can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's. Now they have a filter in them. I like to take the filter out. Why? Because when you're sucking up a lot of dirt all day long, that filter clogs really fast. So I pull that filter out. Now it's got two filters actually. It's got a cloth filter and it's got this fine mesh filter. I take the cloth filter out and I leave the fine mesh in there and I just wear a dust mask instead because after about five or 10 minutes, this thing is gonna plug up and you're not sucking up anything. So keep that in mind. If you buy one of these things, go ahead and pull that monker off and make sure that it's got a good trap in here. You see that little door trap? Because if not, everything's gonna fall right back out. The reason why these are important is because if you're chipping out a whole bunch of gold ore that has free mill gold in it because of its specific gravity and density it's gonna fall and fall down deep so you want to suck up all the dust from what you've been chipping at just to make sure you get every speck now I know this guy right here was sounding off so I'm definitely taking this little pocket you can either take the entire vein or you can do what's called a channel sample where you channel across the vein those are important if you don't know if the vein has gold in it. So what you're doing is you're channeling from the hanging wall through all the vein structure and back into the foot wall. That way, if you do find gold, you can go back and try to isolate the particular zone where that gold was coming from. It's the fastest and easiest way to sample these hydrothermal vein systems when you're out in the field. Now keep in mind when you're sampling these vein structures, the highest concentrations of gold may be outside of the vein, in the wall rock. Now I know that sounds kind of hard to believe, but it's true. They're not always going to be like that, but I have seen some areas where the gold is richer in the wall rock, and I'll get into that later. But for right now, we're going to pull out a lot of this material, and then we're going to crush it up and find out what's in it. That's what I'm talking about right there, look. These are the bugs that you're looking for. See that? I've got calcite. Oh, and I got free mill gold. I got the mimetite crystals. I don't see any copper staining yet, but I got free mill gold and a lot of barite. And of course, hematite in there too. Yeah, there's definitely free mill right there. Oh, this would be a good sample, okay. I'll keep at it. We'll take it back to the house. We'll crush it up, find out how much is in it. See that is? Look at that. Give yourself a That's why you wear a dust mask. But you know it's got gold in it. That fine gold comes out with all that vibration from the hammer drill. Let's get all this stuff back to the house and pan it out because I can't wait to see what's in it. Now I'm going to go ahead and grind up all this material and I'm going to pan out all the stuff that we had in our backpack and I'm going to put up snapshots at the end of this video so you can see what we got and I'll show you what that mimetite, that lead, looks like. It looks just like wolfenite. And don't forget, in a couple days we're going to be giving away all this silver. Everything from one ounce up to one kilogram. You still got time to sign up because we're going to be giving it away in a couple days. Just click the little icon that looks like that, make a $10 pledge to become a premium patron, and you instantly qualify to be in the giveaway for all the silver and gold and a brand new Gold Monster 1000. Yeah. And I'll see you on the next video.